Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is October 18th. It's my weekly shop update. So it's been a fairly productive week for me, which uh, feels pretty good. <laughs> so I finished up all the spice box stuff. All of that content is now done and I am 100% done with that, which is always kind of nice to get all that behind me. So the whole guild series is totally done. It's over there in the guild. The summary video is posted here on YouTube. If you haven't seen that already, I'll leave you a link to check that out. Those ones are always quite the uh, task to edit because there's so much to you know, put down into one video. So that's all done. So then my next guild project will be in, it starts in uh, January and it's gonna be an outdoor garden bench. So a traditional Morrison tenon slat type uh, garden bench type thing. Should be a fun build for sure. So because uh, I was doing a lot of computer work previously, Monday morning, I hopped on Craigslist to see if there were uh, any logs that I could go pick up because I felt like getting out and doing something. <laughs> so I found this uh, Elm log that was posted on Craigslist. It uh, ended up being about 10 feet long, had 41 inches at the base, and it's splayed to a bit over five feet at the, uh, the crotch sections. So kind of an interesting pickup with this. The approach was uh, downhill and it kind of came in at about 90 degrees to the way the log was laying. So uh, yeah, turn the log, get it onto the trailer and get it out of there. So uh, kind of a fun little pickup. And uh, here that thing is. <laughs> this, is uh, this is kind of big. <laughs> it's uh, pretty close to the same size as that maple log that I had on here back in uh, June. Maybe just a little bit physically bigger, maybe. Not by a whole lot though. So, unfortunately, where's the cut? Someone was cutting this thing for firewood, so this section here is pretty much all the way through. So this is probably only gonna yield a seven foot long log, and this will be a nice little crotch section if you saw into something else. And it's the same kind of story on this side. That crotch section has a partial cut as well. So I'll probably end up cutting these top chunks off and just slabbing up the, uh, the main trunk down there. But uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. It's uh, pretty big. <laughs> so I also had a chance to jump back into my encapsulated slab project. So I pulled this thing out of the shop. It's been leaning against the wall since July. Threw it on the sawmill bed and went through the flattening process once again to level out all of the epoxy and get everything flushed up and bring this thing back into flat. So then once this thing was totally flattened, I brought it back into the shop and got to doing some cleanup work with the sander removing all the milling marks from the router, getting it all roughly cleaned up, and then I could trim it down to final size. So I squared everything up, made all those cuts with a track saw, and now this is where things are at. I uh, just done a few touch-up fills, so this thing's got a few spot fills here from some smaller voids, and uh, from this step now, it's gonna be uh, polishing and stuff. So this is only sanded at uh, 60 grit right now, so we're going to go up to, I don't know what yet, probably 800 or something, and then get some finish on here. So it's going to be a, a good amount of sanding here in my future, but uh, no, it's not too bad. The shop's heated. It's nice in here. I'm happy. <laughs> so that's where uh, this thing is at. I was originally kind of toying with the idea of making the, this thing like two videos, but it's probably be one longer one. Uh, I got a pretty good amount of detail in this thing. And then once this is a tabletop, I'll figure out some kind of base for it. I'm still kicking around some ideas in my mind. So we'll kind of see where that ends up. But that is where this one's at. Getting close to seeing some finish, which I am very, very excited for. So last time I was talking about how we had loaded up the kiln with some new slab skins. And this is a sample that Eric just put together. So this is from our previous loads. We have some really fun crotch figure going on here. And this has got some epoxy fills. And as you can see, this does wrap around the, uh, well, this is kind of a bad spot, but you can see that it does wrap. And if you flip it over, you can see that it's, uh, it's actually plywood underneath. So this is a really cool concept that, uh, again, we're kind of playing around with. So this with the edges folded down, that's done with Andy Klein's miter fold blade, which uh, is pretty darn sweet. You can see here we got the, uh, the end folded down as well. So conceptually, that could be a tabletop or really any you know, rectangular thing you could think of. 
all made for them from a small slab that's only about a quarter inch thick, stuck down right there. So, still playing around with this concept, but uh, it's just cool to see this thing actually turn into something. Lindsay's also been working on the stock for the skateboards, so this is a blank which will be resigned for all of the uh, the veneers and everything for one board, I think. So that's still coming along as well. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some skateboards rolling around here sometime soon. <laughs> but that's what I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a green and green blanket chest by Brandon. It's made from mahogany with ebony poles and it's based off a design from Daryl Peart. The case is constructed with finger joints and the top is a breadboard construction. The finish is a die topped with armor seal, and you can find more of Brandon's work over on Instagram. Next is a dresser by Ryan. Ryan built this dresser for his daughter, and it's based off the plans from Fine Woodworking. The carcass is made from air-dried walnut, with the side and rear panels being resawn and book matched. The front was cut from a solid piece of ambrosia maple, so the drawer fronts all have a continuous green. The drawers are joined with half-blind dovetails in the front and through dovetails in the back. The drawer poles are made from cutoffs from the carcass, and you can find more of Ryan's work over on Instagram. Next is a TV console by Marty. This is Marty's interpretation of a mid-century modern TV console in walnut. It's finished with a shellac and then top coated with a waterborne alkaline varnish. Last of this week is a desk by Ben. This was Ben's first tree to furniture project. He found a section of ash on Facebook Marketplace and then used a chainsaw mill to cut the log into slabs. The desk is assembled with floating mortise and tenons and the top is attached via fasteners so it can be removed. It's finished with a dark walnut stain and four coats of armor seal satin. And lastly, if you're in the area, there is the Twin City Tool Swap and Expo put on by the Minnesota Woodworkers Guild this weekend. That is October 19th. I will, uh, I will be there. I'm giving a quick talk at 10 o'clock in the morning about uh, urban logging and slabs and stuff like that. And then I'll be hanging out in the parking lot doing some tailgating. Um, with some slabs, I think. So <laughs> if you're in the area, definitely stop out. Should be a fun time. So I think that is, uh, that's about it for me this week. <laughs> Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.